Well, it's a very good question because it's just recently been, been appreciated and understood that there are actually two very important reasons. One is that for the next 40 years, we're going to see just a tremendous dramatic increase <coughs> in urban expansion. So urban growth, mostly in China, India, and other places, will consume agricultural land to, to an enormous extent. And, and uh, recent calculations show that for the next 40 years, urban growth will consume land approximately three times the size of France. And this is not just random land, this is often the most prime agricultural land. <clears throat> and what we will see happen in a world with an increasing population is of course that agriculture has to expand somewhere else. And that would be in areas where it will actually have an enormous impact on biodiversity and ecosystems. So this is something we need to include in our understanding of how urbanization is related to biodiversity and ecosystems and try to see how we could manage urbanization in a more sustainable way. That's the first reason. The second reason is that cities are <coughs> often very rich in biodiversity. And that is because they were located in very rich areas, in, in floodplains, <coughs> in low areas with high fertility. So naturally you would have very high diversity of plants and animals. And now cities need to learn how to coexist with that rich biodiversity. Are there are multiple ways where the municipality and the people living in an urban area could do that. Just in the neighborhood, people could invest in green roofs that actually could increase biodiversity. Uh, they could help <coughs> planting trees. Uh, looking at the larger munic municipality, you could see that there are always a lot of opportunities for restoration. Because cities have been growing and there are areas which are not, no longer used, which could be restored. You could have functioning ecosystems. and, and actually enhance and maintain the, the native biodiversity. And f that is important particularly for wetlands, wh which have become very scarce and rare in, in the urban landscape. And restoration of wetlands would do tremendous to, to maintain native biodiversity in that landscape. It's critical. Main, first of all, because more than half of the world's population live in cities, and that proportion is going to increase dramatically in the next 30, 40 years. Maybe up to 70% of the world's population will live in cities. So what that population is doing in terms of consumption and behavior will have a major impact on sustainability. So actually in cities, we, I think we have the key for changing the trajectory, that actually cities <coughs> and the people living in cities have the responsibility to slowly turn around uh, the development to uh, have a consumption that is less, is less resource intensive and also that cities since they are consuming resources also should take a responsibility and provide incentives for more sustainable stewardship of ecosystems in distant landscapes or in seascapes so all the food water and fish and other resources co coming into cities should be managed in a sustainable way and, and the people living in the city will be responsible for creating those incentives. Well in the assessment it's not just describing where we are and where we're going, it's also a lot about discussing guidelines and ideas and, and becoming a source of inspiration for municipalities around the world. And, I think there's particularly one area looking the next 30, 40 years ahead where, where there are lots of inspiration and that is how cities actually should address climate change. And, and I think looking at biodiversity and ecosystems is one of the more neglected but perhaps one of the more, more important and areas in which have a large potential to help cities uh, address uh, heat waves, the increased frequency of heat waves in cities and increased frequencies of um, very dramatic uh, precipitation. And their vegetation could play a very important role, um, being a very low cost investment, low maintenance, but also, importantly, also a low carbon alternative. And I think this CBO, the Cities and Biodiversity Outlook, will 
actually provide some new ideas and, and innovation and inspiration for city planners, municipalities, but also for the ordinary citizen, because it's always about interacting with all these uh, actors and groups, we, we could actually form a more sustainable future.